Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. Uh, today we're back in Hit Film 2 Ultimate. It's the third in our series of backgrounds. Today we're going to create a procedural underwater background. This one's actually animated as well. This is the first of our animated backgrounds, so uh, this is quite a cool one. I was inspired by this by a, a tutorial for After Effects by short form video, which I originally ported to hit film to ultimate i might release that tutorial but i completely changed it for this particular background so it's inspired by but actually completely different because i wanted to take i wanted to take it in a slightly different direction uh, and add our own uh, tint to it for the tushka channel so it wasn't just a straight port but it was definitely inspired by short form videos so if you get a chance check out their uh, website and check out their youtube channel as well some great tutorials for after effects anyway let's get on with the tutorial we're going to start out with a new composite shot which we're going to call shot container uh, as per always uh, and this time I've actually spelt it right which is a change um, I've actually left a lowercase c in there on the container <laughs> so I didn't quite get it right which is no surprise is it really let's be honest about it next thing we'll do we're going to create a new plane we're going to call this uh, under water lit background and uh this is this is uh, all part of where i start to go in a completely different direction to uh, short form videos uh he went for a dark uh, watercolor here I, i've completely changed that because i've got a lot of extra animated elements over the uh, lit color uh what you want here is is a bright uh blue with a, a, a maybe a tint of green but you don't really have to worry about the green too much to be honest uh, and you can always change this color out later anyway because it's just a, it's just a typical plane so we're going to load that in like so uh, then we're going to go to generate and we're going to bring a fractal noise onto this we're going to open the fractal noise properties up here we're going to go to appearance and change that straight to multiply so we're layered over like so um and then we're going to uh, we're not going to worry about the colors because black and white are good enough for us we're going to whip the exposure up to 1.6 like so and then we're going to bring the offset down to minus 0 0.34 like this and that gives us the uh, nice effect that we want and um, one of the things that we do want to do right here now is we want to create a keyframe by pressing this little green button here on the seed and then we're going to pull the slider somewhere over towards the uh, 30 second mark on our on our composite shot and we're going to create a new keyframe and we'll call the seed five so uh, when you play through you can actually see already we're starting to get some nice movement there that actually looks a little bit ocean like uh, colors are all wrong but don't worry about that at this point uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a cloud filter we're going to drag a cloud filter down onto our uh, underwater lip plane uh, we're going to open up the cloud filter controls and we're going to change the speed uh, to um, zero on the x and five on the y um, and we're going to multiply that by what we've already got and now you'll start to see that we're, we're starting to get something that's really resembles something that's nasty and underwater and and so on and so forth and like i say don't forget we can always go back and change the color of that plane later to get the exact colors that we wanted uh the next thing we're going to do is um we're going to create a new plane um we're going to make it uh it doesn't actually matter about the color of this so we're just going to make it bright green and we're going to call it uh, bubble. Uh, yeah, we'll just call it bubble. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to turn this straight into a composite shot. And we'll just we'll uh, call it bubble container just to be consistent with the rest of our naming. And we'll convert this over to a composite shot. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our ellipse mask tool 
hold the shift key you press on the plane first so we can actually do it hold the shift key so we get a perfect circle you don't really need to you can you can do it by hand if you wanted to like so but it's uh it's um easier to actually hold the shift key and just uh and just pull out a perfect circle makes life easier for yourself pull it somewhere into the center like so and we're going to open the mask properties and we're going to bring the uh, feather strength right up so it's kind of a, a blur shape we're looking at like so okay we're going to go back into our shot container now and we're actually going to bring that to the bottom and we're going to turn the visibility off so you can't see it anymore we turn it completely off uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a particle system um, so we uh, drag our uh, particle system, our particle simulator, down uh, above the underwater lit, like so. Uh, this will automatically create a new camera. Um, we'll rename the new particle system to Bubble Machine, just for fun. Because I hate bubble machines. Whenever I go to a, a, a venue and they've got a bubble machine, I want to leave. Anyway, back to the uh, particle machine. We're going to go to, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the position um, minus 600, I think. And what that does is it pulls the particle simulator completely off the screen which is what we actually want um probably go a little bit further if we wanted to say minus 700 like so um you have to bear with me on this one because i'm flying this one a bit on the uh the sea seat of my pants so uh we're going to time shift this uh back to about minus 35 as you can see, there's a bit of a particle starting to appear here. We're not going to see too much of it because the trajectory is not right yet. Uh, we'll open up emitter. The emitter properties. We want point, and I think we want cone, which looks about right. We're going to open up the trajectory settings, and we want the orientation to be uh, 90 degrees here, I think. Um, and we want the radius to be 90 as well. And I think that should, uh, that's not actually giving us any bubbles at the moment, unfortunately. Ah, what we need is we need to change the orientation to minus 90, and that will bring them uh, upwards rather than downwards, which is uh, perfectly what we want there. Uh, so we're going to go to general here, check that it's active, it's active, we already know it's active because we saw it. We're going to go to particle system and the general here, um, and we want to change this down to uh, probably somewhere in the region of about three particles per second, um, and we can close that then. Appearance, we're going to go texture source layer, we're going to go for the bubble container. Uh, I don't know why that was 1024, 1024. Uh, I'm just going to open that up and check why that is. It isn't, so I have no idea what it's talking about. It's being completely ridiculous, which is no surprise with hip film, let's be honest. Anyway, let's get back to the job in hand. We're looking at the particle system. We've got the appearance. Um, we're not too bad. But we're going to change the color, I think, to uh, something that's a bit more, a bit more uh, in line with the background, which is eighteen ninety eight sixty one, uh, which gives us a, a green color, and I'll bring the opacity down as well, so we're uh, semi transparent. Um, I don't think we're going to go for any. Uh, 
any appearance variation. What we'll go for is we'll go for life now. We're going to bring the life up to uh, 35 seconds, like so. We're going to bring the scale down as well, right down to five. And uh, we'll bring the speed down to 40, like so. And the mass will leave at one. Everything else there I think is just about fine. Uh, we're not going to be using mobile emitters or movement variation, deflectors or forces or anything like that. So uh, the bubble should be there or thereabouts now. Yeah, we've got some nice kind of movement of bubbles there. I still have no idea what that 1024, 1024 business was, but hey, we can live with it. It's never happened before. If it doesn't crash the program, then live with it. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to create a, a black plane. We'll create a black plane. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna call this uh, we'll call this light streaks. Yeah, we'll go we'll go with light streaks for this one. Like I say, I'm flying this one a bit on the seat of my pants, so you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to go with me on this one. Uh, we're gonna bring this blended to soft light. And then we're going to add a, we'll go for a fractal noise on this one, I think. There's a few ways of doing this, but we'll go for a fractal noise here. Um, we're going to open up the the uh, settings for the fractal noise, go to transform. Uh, we're going to open the axis scale. Uh, and we're going to put X at about 20 and Y at about 150, I think, which is going to give us a bit of a streaky look. Um, we're going to go for exposure of, uh, 0 0.2, bring the sub levels down to zero, like so, uh, we're going to go for offset of minus 0 0.16, like that. We're going to uh, open this up to the seed. We're going to create a zero keyframe there. We're going to go near the end and we're going to create a keyframe of five, like so. Now, that doesn't look like much at the moment, but with the movements all right. Now, what we're going to do is shrink the actual frame down here and then we're going to go to our warp settings like so and um, we're going to bring a quad warp onto the light streaks and we're going to bring this down to this corner you don't have to be particularly accurate with this these are light streaks so they don't have to be particularly accurate there they're kind of biased on uh, light reacting to uh, the water anyway and, and water is very organic things so you don't have to be mr accurate on this um We've got the light streaks there. We've got some movement of water. We've got some bubbles. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. You can add a vignette to this. Uh, you can do all kinds of various things if you wanted to. Uh, we bang a grade in just so you can see it with a vignette. We'll go to color grade in. And pull a vignette down. And just pull it out a bit. Maybe add the softness in there a little bit. And you kind of get in the effect of uh, under underwater. It looks quite good. You can you can mess with the bubbles, uh, bring their opacity up if you want to. You can uh, mess with various things. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. There's there's plenty you can mess with there, but it's it's quite a nice underwater background. Uh, one of the one of the first things you can do if you want is to uh, mess with the clouds a bit and the fractal noise. Um, when you start messing with those settings, you can start to get a lot of different 
different flavors of of this uh of this underwater background um if you see my preview you can actually do a a, a nice effect where you drop things into the background rotate them slightly and uh you can you can uh, make them distort and and fade into the water and you get a very nice underwater effect but this is not too bad uh, like i say i've had to ha i've had to have it a little brighter than i would like uh, because otherwise it won't show up on uh, youtube properly but um that's the tutorial i hope you liked it and i'll see you on the next one